This uh, short presentation sets out my somewhat difficult journey, uh, living with diabetes type 2 for over 25 <coughs> years, 18 of which controlled with insulin, reaching levels as much as uh, 150 units a day when my weight was well over 100 kilos. Um, and how desperately I tried to reduce my weight with diet and a little exercise, as we all try to do, to where I am today. This photo is a recollection for, for me for one of the lowest points, actually, in my life. I was in England, in London, in 2007, settling the affairs of my brother, who pa had passed away the previous year, aged 59. At this time, I was also 59. We were about 18 months apart. Um, and confronting my own mortality while still in a very much a state of grief. My brother died in England with diabetes, also made worse because he was smoking, and we know this has a logarithmic effect on accelerating the medical side effects of diabetes. I myself was uh, overweight and a long-term diabetic, with poor control too. But fortunately, I had given up smoking uh, for about 10 years at that time. I knew I had to do something to change the downward spiral of, of my health and general well-being, including minor depression, brought about simply by the frustration of not being able to improve my situation. And I'm sure that's the case with many diabetics. So the very next year, my wife, Kathy, said, why don't we try Weight Watchers? Okay. So I said, well, okay, nothing. I've tried everything else, which we did, and immediately my competitive uh, nature kicked in with such vigor, such vigor, that in 2008, I was the Australasian Slimmer of the Year. <laughs> um, from a hundred, thank you. <laughs> from 103 kilos, sorry, okay, go back to the, here we are, there's the certificate. From 103 kilos um, down to 75 kilos, kilograms, uh, and in the best health improvement category. Now, winning this award was probably one of the most surreal days of my life. Uh, I went to a lunch in the city for a presentation. I had cameras in my face. I had my my face was on the screen, on every screen on the room. And, uh, and I was uh, interviewed on Radio 2GB and uh, in a peer in magazines. And uh, to tell the truth, I, I, I quite enjoyed the fame. But <laughs> <laughs> how, how, albeit very short-lived. But I, I actually achieved this, driven by one thing and one thing only. Fear of my very own mortality. Having lived with diabetes for the last 16 years at that time, and, and basically just losing the battle up until that day when I had the cameras. And Let me tell you a little bit about Weight Watchers. It's quite interesting. This was in 2008. Uh, I know they probably changed their format a little bit by now, but as was said at every meeting, you walk in the door with a dream. You walk out the door believing the dream. The weight loss program was a portion restrictive format that required willpower and resistance to temptation. There was no medical backup checks of what of what your what was going on in here, just what was going on when you got on the weighing machine. So let me let me describe what happened at, at weighings. Very interesting. Our group at that time was about twenty people. Firstly, there was a queue for the amenities, you know, obviously. <laughs> um, 
You wore as little clothing as you, as you did. Um, some even left their underwear at home, so I'm told. <laughs> and you gave your partner your phone, your loose change, your keys, anything that you would weigh, any, anything at all. And then you jumped on the scales. And everyone was watching. To receive either applause or silence. <laughs> because it, you were, hadn't lost any or you were a little bit over. So, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> this was how Weight Watchers program uh, was operated then. And they had many successful members, but like me, some of us could not sustain the constant sacrifice of eating the foods that we really craved. So there comes in the yo-yo. So unfortunately my award-winning weight loss didn't last and over the next several years I was fat many times and my weight went up and down all the time. All the while though my diabetes progressively worsened again. What really scared me though was when I went to the optometrist and uh, my doctor asked, my endocrinologist asked me to get a retinal scan. So I got a retinal scan and, and the optometrist said, How? I said to him, you know, how's it look? It was like, I didn't say too much, but I could see on the screen, he said, look at this Murray, there's bleeding in the back of the eye. You can see the, the blood vessels there. This is, the, this is not good. And of course, with diabetes, it's one of the other worst side effects. Apart, apart from losing limbs and all that sort of thing, you can go blind. So that really scared me. And uh, which in diabetics is, uh, as I said, it's one of the first signs that glucose levels are, are far too high. So life went on. I sort of got over the fear, I guess, but I just kept looking at the, my morning tea and I was still spoiling myself. When my sugars were high, I just took more insulin. But we've all seen today what that does, and, the, and, and it's a downward spiral. But I was starting to get more concerned comments from my endocrinologist and our meetings uh, Every six months, we're getting longer and longer. And uh, so then, and of course what happened was that he'd look at my, my glucose levels and he would up my insulin. And uh, but I, I knew this wasn't a long-term plan. <coughs> I needed something to change. Believe it or not, this was pain. I got some pain in my left knee. Went to my GP, who referred me to no other than Dr. Duran Um So I, there I sat, went, got an appointment with Duran and went, and, he, and uh, Dr. Scher, who after, who after he saw my scan, said, yes, Murray, you, you need surgery. And you've got a little bit of arthritis happening there, but you know. So he sent me for the regulatory pre-op blood tests. No breakfast, go off to the, 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 the and have my blood tested. And I thought, well, that's okay, you know, that's pretty standard. A bit concerned though, because I thought maybe my glucose levels might be a bit high, and, uh, but, he, but he's gonna work on my knee. He won't, he won't worry about that. Mm -mm. A few days later, I received a phone call from, doc, from Dr. Doran Scher asking me if I was being looked after by a diabetic specialist. I knew it was on then. I knew, I knew I was in trouble. I answered yes. But I knew that my glucose levels were not the best. Hmm, he said. He told me that my diabetic control was uh, poor at best and referred me to no other than Dr. Paul Mason. <laughs> so my first appointment with Paul was in, in um, August 2016. 
So it's about 15 months now. Famous apes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there I sat in the chair on the other side of the table from, from Dr. Mason. While he was going through my blood results, which I had to have previously, and all my notes. And I was just sitting there thinking, you know, well, maybe my glucose level has improved. <laughs> then uh, he looked up at me and he said, Murray, if I can help you, but this is how it has to be. My rules. I knew I was in trouble, I thought. <laughs> so, so uh, he gave me a list of all the things that I had to throw out of my fridge and my pantry. And, I, and a list, another list with what I had to replace it with, which was all low carb, of course. My, my, my glucose levels were, you'll see, is, were, were 9.5 at that time. Um, so the other thing was that was my wife was, was really concerned. I had to take Kathy, my wife, back to see Dr. Mason. So look, because I went home and told Kathy I was going to get, eat all this fat and eggs and lots of salt, and um, as well as protein and things like that. But I said, you can't possibly do that. If, if, if you eat fat, you get fat. I said, no, I've... I trust this guy. This is this is a big chance for me, darling. This is I, this is this is what I need to do. And um, so, okay, Kathy came with me to one of Dr. Mason's presentations one evening and saw the reality of what this program was really about. So I then had her support which was important because I was throwing all her favourite food out of the pantry. <laughs> um, and then he finished up by sending me to uh, what every guy in this whole world absolutely dreads. I had to go and have a colonoscopy and an endoscopy. He put me through the mill um, with all the tests and scans. I've had them all. And he knows more about me in here than Kathy knows about me out here. <laughs> so, as you can see how my diabetes has improved, but I, I sincerely trust that sharing my journey with you today encourage you all to study and understand this very important work by Dr. Paul Mason and Dr. Duran Sher in controlling this awful, relentless disease, diabetes, in my case, diabetes too. It took my wonderful, gentle and loving brother away from me. I don't pretend for one minute to understand the medical algebra, and I don't intend to, to uh, talk about that at all. I don't know anything about that in why this way of life is so such a successful way of living. I just want to thank very much Dr. 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 Sherman, Dr. Paul Mason, for their wonderful low carb, low sugar, oh sorry, uh, partners, I'm going to say, for their, their, both their partners, which is Fiona and, and um, and Karen, Karen for their wonderful recipes, which I got issued on the second visit, I think it was. <laughs> um, fabulous little shakshuka and, and uh, my, my really favourite baked, spicy baked fish with cauliflower rice. It's absolutely beautiful, fabulous. And there are lots of other great recipes in there. And I thought, this is, this is looking good, this is looking good. <laughs> I, like you, Harry, I do most of the cooking now because I, w I want to see what's going in as well. But I make those dishes and I enjoy it very much. And, and I'm sort of semi-retired at the moment, so Kathy really enjoys me cooking as well. 
Um, and so, uh, and finally, to uh, Dr. Paul Mason and Dr. Dorinshire for giving me hope. I, I thank them so much for giving me hope that I can spend a longer time enjoying my four children and my five grandchildren. And as I say to him every time I leave his surgery, without fail, after every appointment, thank you for what you do and giving me another chance, sorry, of living a happy and healthier life, which means now for me at the age of 69 so very much. I need to predicate my concluding remarks by saying that my presence here today is only to bear witness to the results of their work. There is no doubt in my view that the work of um, both Dr. Paul Mason and Doran Shirley could see an amazing health improvement, improvement and quality of life, not only in Australia, but internationally. This is very serious and very important to all those like me have suffered for so, so many years. Just to finish, I'd like to say that I just hope I have given you the encouragement in not just having a dream, remember? But believing that sometimes that dream comes true. Thank you.